you. We're a relatively new team and I wanted to share some of um, some information on the sort of direction that we're going in with our team and the work that we have been doing and are thinking about doing and kind of just have a bit of a discussion about um, uh, your thoughts on that, your feedback, your input, um, try and help guide this work um, from your experiences. So this is going to be a, a fairly interactive session. So if you're in Feedloop or YouTube, please join through to Zoom on Feedloop um, if you want to uh, participate. I'll try and also look at Feedloop chat and like the Etherpad and stuff. But I think if you're in if you're in Zoom, that's going to be ideal. So um, the title of the talk was about improving mobile web for experienced editors. The sort of more specific um, lens that we're working through is talking about content moderators. And so let me just quickly tell you what I mean by that. So for us, oh, thanks, Andrew. Yes, I will, I will try to speak slower. Um, so for us, content moderation means um, processes which review, report, or make changes to the contributions of other editors. So that might mean processes like patrolling recent changes, reporting bad articles, using admin tools, undoing edits. Um, this isn't just limited to administrators, if I say moderators. I do also just mean active editors that are kind of doing things beyond just writing article content. I want to make it clear that to some extent, all editors are moderators. You know, um, most Wikimedia contributions are building on the work of others. And so to some extent, when I'm talking about more moderators or helping moderators, I'm also just talking about helping editors um, as a whole. So. Earlier in the year, we published some user research. We spoke to a few dozen editors across um, a bunch of different Wikimedia projects, and we published this report called Content Moderation in Medium-Sized Wikimedia Projects. So we hear a lot, I think, from the biggest Wikimedia um, communities about their problems in terms of content moderation. And we wanted to make sure that we were also thinking about how these sort of slightly smaller communities that are still needing to do a lot of content moderation work um, try and figure out how, how, how they were experiencing that and what problems they had so that we as a product team could sort of figure out some, some ways of helping there. Um, we focused that research in the Tamil Wikipedia and Ukrainian Wikipedia communities. But as I say, we did speak to editors from um, a wide variety of places, as well as reading a bunch of previous research and requests and um, that, that sort of thing. Um, and the main thing that we learned was that mobile web was pretty bad for content moderation. So we have this project page on MediaWiki that you could go and check out. Um, we basically decided that, or we observed that as we were speaking to all of these content moderators and active editors, they were either saying, I don't want to use mobile web because it kind of sucks, or I can't do the things that I want to do on it. Or if I do use my mobile phone, I sort of switch to desktop mode and I, I pinch and zoom through the sort of desktop skin. And that, you know, that as I'm a, also an active editor on English Wikipedia, so that didn't come as a surprise to me. Um, I almost exclusively edit on desktop. Um, but I think it speaks to a, a, an area that we're really sort of missing in terms of our focus. Because something like half of our page views to Wikimedia projects are on mobile. And there are a pretty wide range of communities where as many as 40, 50, 60% of editors are primarily editing from a mobile device. And if they're getting frustrated, if they're not being able to do the things that they want to do, then you know we're, we're missing something in the, the sort of experience for them that we can hopefully improve. So I'm going to get to a, a point in a minute where we can sort of chat about this a little bit, but um, I just want to quickly explain some of the work we've already done over the past um, three to six months or so. Um, the first project we picked was a fairly small one. Um, there's this sort of overflow menu on mobile web when you're on a page. There's obviously an edit button, a history button, the watch list button, but there's some other functionality that sort of gets hidden away behind this drop down menu. It includes things like moving the page, page information, linking to the Wikidata item. It also includes administrator tools like protecting the page. And while that was already implemented, the only way you could get to it was by turning on the advanced mobile contribution setting. And so um, we thought that that maybe wasn't ideal and there might be a way to bring that to all editors so that they have access to those sorts of um, features like moving a page without having to go and find some setting that isn't um, hugely intuitive. And so we made some improvements to that menu. We added uh, the block user button if you're an administrator and you're on a user page. 
And we also did some research with newer editors and found that that menu wasn't very confusing to them. Um, it was kind of understandable. And so we decided to roll that out to all editors. So now uh, if you're a logged in editor and you have a user account, then you should see that drop down menu on, on every page now. The second thing we've been working on is preferences. Um, at the moment on mobile web, there is no link to user preferences, um, which kind of surprised me when I realized this. Um, you can open the search bar and type special preferences and then go through to the page, but that's obviously very unintuitive if you don't know that page already exists. And that's obviously a super critical page for editors. It includes functionality like changing your password, changing your email address, um, updating your notification settings, turning off banners. And so we thought that even though maybe it isn't a specifically a, a moderation feature, that seemed pretty high priority to us. And so we're currently working on a um, new design for that page. And then we're going to make sure that it's linked in the interface so that users can kind of access that, that page and, and take a look at it. So I've seen at least one or two questions in chat already. Um, and I just want to kind of open up for a maybe quick 10 minute discussion on um, mobile web in general. Um, I don't know if you want to put this in Zoom chat or in feed loop chat, but maybe raise your hand or something if, if you try to use uh, mobile devices to edit on a, on a regular basis. And then I'd love to hear what your experiences are. What, what problems do you face? Um, you can feel free to either put that in chat or um, unmute if you're on Zoom. Um, I do see there's one question uh, already about whether we include blocking users in the scope of our team. And I would say not specifically. Um, there are other product teams at the foundation like anti-harassment tools and trust and safety tools that kind of spend more time thinking about blocking users. Um, we did end up adding block user to that drop-down menu because it was missing, but I think any further than that, we're unlikely to sort of um, make changes to, to how users get blocked. So that aside, feel free to um, unmute or stick in chat if, um, if you have thoughts about your experiences of using mobile web at all. So I see in chat, Abdul says, uh, I use mobile devices to edit. Um, I'm curious, what kind of edits do you make? Um, are, they, are they sort of big edits? Are they small edits? Are there, um, are there typical activities you do on mobile that you don't do on desktop? Uh, Renvoy, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hi Sam. Uh, yeah, nice to hear from you. Um, yeah, generally, um, as as a more experienced sort of user, uh, of course, uh, the, there are some times when uh, you have sort of don't have access to your computer and uh, edit from a mobile phone uh, is sort of very necessary. But yeah, it's, it's generally nice to see um, uh, sometimes, yeah, for example, on our Discord server uh, in, on your Ukrainian Wikipedia, uh, we have uh, this user that only edits from mobile phone. He's kind of a new, new user. so. Uh, all, all the time we hear some uh, like sort of um, arguments why 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 is this there not there something like that so yeah it's kind of uh, it's important to get uh, sort of this perspe perspective of a new user maybe uh, and yeah it's it may not be very obvious sometimes but um, yeah yeah generally uh, yeah we need to uh, yeah, make in any improvements, I think, in mobile uh, devices, yeah, is is nice, nice work. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Abdul Rafi, do you want to speak? Hello. Hi, Butch. Go ahead. Okay, I posted my question on the chat. Uh, actually, this is ongoing issue that I've uh, encountered. Sir, uh, uh, this uh, graph chart uh, 
I've been, I already made uh, about uh, a thousand artic uh, articles using this template and I cannot, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm not comfortable undoing this. Um, I'm using this graph chart and uh, it's visible on uh, the mobile browser, but on the, um, on this uh, Wikipedia app, it's, it's not visible. So charts can be seen there. Gotcha. That's good to know. Yeah. And so this is a important point is that we're the scope of our team is to think about mobile web. So through a browser um, the apps are kind of distinct and there are other foundation teams that work on those, but um, I'll make sure to take that to them and see if there's not um, already a fabricated ticket or something that they could look at. Um, I'll make sure they know about that. I'm just scanning through. There's a whole bunch of comments on, on Zoom. Uh, yeah, Michael, you mentioned that um, you don't enjoy editing from mobile because it uh, is kind of limited in terms of functionality in the interface. I wonder um, what kind of functionality do you find is missing? Um, what is it you're trying to do that, that you aren't able to do? Yeah, like, uh, for example, I can books, but when I try to switch into the edit mode, I seem to only have access to only the sun, the, the, the info box plus the intro, but the general the general article is not visible like on the device, even when I try to, uh, to, to, to turn the orientation of the screen, still I seem not to really have the content, the entire content of the article uh, displayed. And as well, the, the phone screen really is, is uh, the interface is really small if you are really if you really want to do like um, reasonable editing uh, on Wikipedia and and any any other any other uh, projects or with data I, I believe it's the same thing because um, the phone screens are always small in size yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I've seen discussion on that as well, that on mobile, you can only edit sort of section by section. So if you hit that main edit pencil, it actually tries to get you to edit that like top section and you can't edit the page as a whole. Um, I think that's something we could definitely look into because um, yeah, I, I've also had that frustration <laughs> when I tried to edit on mobile. Um, Renvoy. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to uh, sort of uh, find some, uh, maybe at least one example of uh, things that uh, should be maybe looked into. Uh, yeah, that um, this user was um, sort of reporting to us. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's interesting, but uh, I don't really know how, uh, because I didn't really uh, do it myself on mobile, but um, in fact, it is, it is quite hard to find um, this um, sort of, uh, move from Wikipedia to Wikidata from mobile phone. Yeah, there was some some there was some mistake in uh, sort of template um, info box on the right side of the um, like yeah. If you're on mobile, not maybe from the right side, but um, yeah. So uh, user would try to sort of change that and uh, yeah, moving to Wikidata wasn't as as easy as uh, maybe should have been. Maybe, maybe not. Um, so yeah, that's something to maybe think uh, for. So yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, Youngjin? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you fine. Oh, yeah. So I'm Youngjin for Korea Wikipedia, by the way. So I, I have several experience that share. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be, it may be duplicate because I joined the session a little bit late. But yeah, so what I was feeling about personally about mobile web is like the, I, I 
I can, as a administrator query in Wikipedia, I cannot able to use my word uh, control the administrative actions during, during the mobile. I know the, I know the editors, I'm, I'm pretty sure the other peers explained uh, many concerns, but like the on the administration side, I know it is like the most major problem because like, for example, if I want to protect or block, it is kind of like very messier interface so that I cannot able to using it and uh, I cannot able to using like the somehow the desktop mode. So like the how I using the, the Wikipedia in mobile is like the, I just like to manually convert it to the desktop mode and using it that way because of the administrative action. I know Wikidata is another problem, but I know previous person already spoken it, so I'm not gonna do repeat again and yes, so the biggest problem also is the mobile interfaces basically just look like they're just like a reader, reader's interface. And I don't feeling like the, that does not encouraging any people to edit or like the, that does not giving the throwing the message that you cannot able, you can able to editing or those, those things. So I think that's kind of important concept in order to do, in order to get attract the mobile, especially because Nowadays, many people are using just only the mobile, not the desktop interface to just like the surfing and the contribute over the browsers. Yeah, I think those are great points. Um, and it's it segues on great to what I'm about to speak to. Um, I just want to speak to one question that Amir put in chat about um, the strategy or planning to have a responsive interface that is, you know, not a se separate website. You know, at the moment we have this .m. Um, and there's this very hard line between sort of mobile and desktop. Um, I think that's a discussion that we should have. Um, and we're, our team is talking to the reading web team who are doing the desktop refresh work at the moment. Um, we've been speaking to them quite a lot about this work. And I think that's something we're going to keep talking with them about. Um, I think they'll be in the best place to work on this rather than uh, our team. We have quite a small team. Um, but yes, I would love to see that as well. I think it would it would make considerably more sense than this sort of hard line desktop versus mobile uh, paradigm that we have at the moment. Um, but okay, thanks for sharing all your input. I'm going to move on a little bit here um, and uh, actually build a, a bit on what uh, Youngjin just shared, which is um, the mobile interface is very much a reader focused interface. I, I do personally agree with you there. Um, and I think that's because that's what, what a lot of the work has been um, focused on in the past on mobile web. We've um, uh, historically at the foundation, I mean, um, been thinking primarily about readers when we've been uh, making changes to the mobile site. I will say the reading web team did some great work on advanced mobile contributions a few years ago, um, but we kind of want to build on that and see if we can make this better for, for editors as well. So sort of one of the big questions that we have then is like, how can we increase the number of mobile first content moderators? Um, if reading is good on mobile and, you know, I think making your first edits is also pretty good on mobile. We have the growths uh, the growth team's uh, structured tasks um, that you can kind of engage with. Um, finding the edit pencil, I don't think is too difficult. Um, but past that, you know, how do you then become a, a member of the community and uh, an active editor and a moderator? And that question is partly spurred on by some data we were looking at. So we pulled some data on desktop first editors and mobile first editors. So by that, I mean, editors who make more than 50% of their edits on desktop or mobile. Um, first of all, you can see that there is a lot more active editors on desktop than mobile, which maybe is a concern in itself. You know, if we have half of our page views being mobile um, readers, then I, I might personally expect that number to be higher for mobile. But even of those active mobile editors, um, they are much less likely to participate on talk pages, much less likely to participate in project namespace pages, uh, much less likely to have an advanced user group like patroller or rollbacker. And almost no administrators primarily edit from a mobile device. Um, yeah, and yes, these are numbers from all projects combined. Um, so of the 3,200 administrators, 99% of them primarily edit from a desktop device. Uh, and that number really stood out to me. Um, it really feels to me like if you're a mobile first editor, you should have you know, something approaching an equal opportunity to become an administrator and, and be successful in your project and, and be able to help out in that way. Um, but at the moment, almost zero um, editors, uh, almost zero administrators primarily edit from a mobile device. And if you look at mobile only contributors, that last column, so that's 100% of edits on mobile web, then that's sort of even, even lower across the board. 
Um, and so this is kind of one of the questions we have is like, we want to make mobile better for, for active editors, but we also want to think about, can we bring more editors through that pipeline from making their first edits to being a, an experienced active editor, patroller, administrator, um, in a way that can then support the community more broadly. So as I said, mobile first editors are much less likely to be moderators and administrators. And again, I wanna spend five or 10 minutes uh, just having a chat. Uh, what do you think the barriers are for new editors um, in terms of using those moderation tools on mobile? Um, and when I say moderation tools, I mean things like reporting bad content that they see or undoing edits, um, patrolling. Um, what do you think the biggest barriers are to those editors? Um, and how can we help mobile users discover editing tools and discover moderation tools. Um, and perhaps thinking about this in a way that isn't going to increase the amount of vandalism, for example, you know, not making it too easy to just go through and make very rapid edits, for example. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, Young Jun, I see you have a hand up. I don't, was that from before? Or do you have a something uh, to share? This? Yes, before. But yes, but the only thing I can add for a point is like the some like a user make gadgets are not like compatible or accessible via mobile. Like that's the point I can pop, popping up. Yep, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, there's a comment in chat from Vera about um, it being hard to find out about tools when you're only familiar with the mobile experience. And I think that's a great point. Um, I think sometimes when we, as experienced editors, when we think about it, we, we already know what tools are available. And so we might go looking for those tools that we're familiar with. But if you're a, a new editor and all you've done is you know make an edit and you haven't spent much time on the desktop site, you don't even know what tools are available to you. And so um, we definitely want to think about how to make that mobile experience um, inviting and sort of explanatory, you know, um, it set it up in a way that teaches you a bit about how all these tools work. Uh, there's a comment about how many mobile first editors are very active, i.e. a hundred plus edits a month. I guess that's a group likely to become admins. Um, yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. Um, we haven't delved into that data any further than just looking at those active editors, but I, I would really like to speak to those uh, very active mobile editors who, who aren't moderators or administrators and see what they think. Uh, a comment about having a Twinkle-like interface on mobile uh, would go a long way. I think that's a great idea. Um, I, that's something that we, did look at when we, we were doing our user research. Um, and I think even for desktop, um, uh, some of the Twinkle functionality really is like very, um, very useful and very important. And I know that that's broadly an English Wikipedia only tool. I know that other communities have imported some of it or have tried to import it. Um, but yes, I would love to see that. And I think it would be especially useful for mobile. Okay, well, I'm gonna move on from this slide. There's gonna be some more opportunities to, to share your thoughts um, because I wanna share with you uh, sort of a theory that we have. Um, and this is a fairly new theory. So I would love to um, please please be critical of it and, and uh, tell me what you think. Um, but we have a, a theory about how new editors become active members of their Wikimedia projects. And it relates to four key pages. Um, and these key pages I've been referring to as kind of revision navigation. They're the, the pages that help you navigate the edits that other users are making. 
because we think that after an editor has made some of their first edits, you know, after they have copy edited an article they are interested in, or they've done a structured task from the newcomer homepage, um, at the moment, I think they don't get then guidance on, on where to go um, from there. And we were sort of thinking about this and we think that there are sort of four key pages where a new editor learns some really fundamental things about how Wikimedia projects work. And so these are the page history, which lets you see every edit that is made to a page. Um, if you're a brand new editor, that might be a novel, interesting thing to you that, oh, I can look at the edits other people have made. Um, specifically, they can go through to user contributions and see every edit that an individual contributor has made. They can then, from those pages, go through to a diff and actually look at those individual edits. Um, and then, of course, they can use their watch list to track edits to those pages. And so our theory is that those four pages are sort of core to graduating a user from they've made you know, their first edits to they understand sort of how the wiki works a bit more broadly and how they can navigate those pages and, and see what other editors are doing. And then maybe engage in content moderation if they see the undo button or they find the recent changes feed, that sort of thing. And so we've been thinking then, and I'll show you some, some things on this in a minute, but um, we've been thinking then about, okay, if these four pages are, are important, then what are they like on mobile at the moment and how could we improve them? But first, I just wanna give a couple of minutes um, do you agree with this idea that these four pages are sort of uh, critical to to becoming an active editor? Are there other pages or workflows that you think might be missing here? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Mm. So there's a comment in chat saying that um, when I give talks, I usually show recent changes first and then show how page history and user contributions are filtered. I think that's a great point. We, we haven't included recent changes here, um, but I can absolutely see how that is a, um, how that's a, a key element. When you say that you show recent changes first, is that, is that brand new editors, um, people who haven't edited at all, um, or is that kind of to, to people who have started editing? Uh, and Darcy says, these aren't the only, oh, that scrolled. Uh, these aren't the only lists used for content moderation, recent changes, cleanup backlogs. Yeah, I completely agree. This definitely isn't, a, isn't you know, everything that an editor needs to do content moderation. Um, we're trying to focus really on the first steps that they can take after making their first edits um, and making sure that those sort of key core components uh, are good. Yeah, that's a great point, Amir, that recent changes is important, but doesn't scale well for very large wikis. Um, I completely agree with that. Um, that's something we found in our user research. When we spoke to contributors from the larger wikis, they said, I need filters for recent changes. I need ORES. I need you know, uh, tools like Huggle for filtering edits. And then we went to small wikis. They said, recent changes is fine. I can see every edit that has happened to my wiki. If I um, filter for anonymous edits, I can see the last week all on one page. Um, and so, yeah, I absolutely see that. Uh, Darcy asks, um, the newcomer portal on the user page seems to work really well. Is that on mobile? Yes, it is also on mobile. I actually think it might have been developed as kind of a mobile first experience and then, and then brought to desktop even. Um, and so mobile editors can get that that new homepage. Um, and I think we've been speaking to the, the team that develops that tool. Um, I think there are opportunities to, for editors who have done some of those recommended edits, <clears throat> sort of take them then through to more content moderation or reviewing patrolling sort of uh, contributions. 
Um, because at the moment they're mostly sort of building on existing content. Um, I'd love to think about what those sorts of contributions might be like. Uh, Nick comments that too much space is wasted on mobile, so it gets sold destroying to browse through more than a handful of recent edits. That's interesting. Um, yeah, um, a, a lot of white space is something we've noticed as well. Um, and I, I think it's always a balance between, inf and I think if, if any of you saw the, the talk earlier from the reading web team about the new vector uh, desktop interface, it's it's sort of a similar issue. We We want information density for experience editors, but also we want it to be navigatable and sort of clear for, for people who aren't so experienced. And so it's it's constantly a trade-off. Um, cool, well, thanks for all your input on this. Um, I'm gonna move on uh, to the next topic, which is assuming that these four pages are, are pretty key, um, where do we start as a, as a team in terms of making improvements? And so the first step that we think is uh, most important is improving the diff page. Um, really all of these pages and all of these workflows come back to looking at an individual edit and seeing what, what changed. And in our view, the current diff page on mobile um, doesn't really support a new editor in understanding what is happening. Um, the page hasn't changed for a very long time. It was designed a long time ago, as far as I understand it. And at the moment it's missing some pretty key um, features and links. So um, the one that the communities have raised a lot is that undo is missing. Um, you can thank a user for their edit, but you can't undo it. Um, I know that some communities have a gadget that allows you to undo, but otherwise that button is just not there. Um, you also can't get through to the page history. You can't get to a user's contributions very easily. Uh, your watch list is a little bit hidden here. And so um, this really stood out to us as something that needs improvement. Um, yeah. Uh, Michael points out that um, the diff also doesn't work with red, green color blindness. Absolutely. Um, not only is that diff kind of a mess to pass, um, that was just someone copy editing a paragraph. Um, if you're red, green color blind, then that's actually really hard to, to, to figure out. Um, on desktop, of course, we have that two column view and it's yellow and blue. Um, and the, the, obviously the position helps left and right, but on mobile, um, that green and red is the only way that you can understand the difference between added and removed text. So um, just to be clear, this is the current state. This isn't, this isn't our changes. Um, uh, this is what it looks like right now and what we think needs improving. Um, Darcy asks, is the diff algorithm the same as used on desktop? Um, it is different because on desktop you have a two column view. And so um, the algorithm only needs to to show you what was removed over here and what was added over here. On mobile, the uh, algorithm needs to put those things together. And as you can see from that example there, show you what was removed and also what was added right next to each other. Um, and I think it could be improved a lot. Um, I've seen other inline diff uh, engines. There's um, a tool called Wikidiff, I think, um, which has, oh, sorry, uh, Wikied. Uh, diff it also uses inline and it looks a lot better than this one because it breaks up less of the words so you get more of a removed sentence and then more of an added sentence rather than being like every other word so i think we can make a lot of improvements to that that diff engine so that that's clearer to to look at um and so uh, having looked at this and and sort of decided that this isn't great and we can make some improvements to this We've started making some very early sketches. This is, you know, absolutely version 0 0.001 um, of, of kind of our explorations here. This is very early days. But we made some very simple wireframes of what a new diff could look like on mobile. So um, some of the key things we were thinking about here is obviously getting rid of that red and blue, uh, sorry, red and green diff change and making it probably yellow and blue, given that that's um, how it is on desktop. But we could also introduce some more elements there, like crossing out the old text so that even if um, colorblindness is an issue, you can still tell what was added and what was removed. Compacting some of the top of the diff so that um, you can see the diff more easily um, straight away. Making sure that there are links to the page history, to user contributions, and of course, making sure that there's an undo button. Um, on the undo button, also, we were talking about the fact that 
if you undo an edit, and this is true on desktop and on mobile, it opens the full editor so that you can make a partial change, you know, if you wanted to tweak the edit as part of undoing it. Um, but we looked at some data and found that in the vast majority of cases, when someone tries to undo an edit, they undo the whole edit. Um, making a partial edit is pretty rare. And so we were thinking, especially on mobile, why not have it so that when you click undo, you can just edit, uh, edit your edit summary and then confirm the undo, right? You don't have to open the editor at any point, um, though you can if you want to. Um, so this is just kind of an early exploration. We're not, um, we haven't tested this with anyone yet. I think you're uh, more or less the first community members who are seeing this. Um, and so I'd love to get your feedback on, you know, what do you like or dislike about those sketches? Um, how do you feel about the inline diffs? And what do you think about that undo um, process? Uh, what what comes to mind for that? I see that Amir has an, an immediate thought that this is dangerous. Do you, do you want to expand on that? Um, if, if I'm allowed to speak, um, there's a reason um, revert and undo uh, are uh, separate on desktop. Uh, revert was much earlier. Revert uh, was there when I joined in 2004. Undo appeared around 2007 or so. And it may or may not be the reason, but uh, 2007 is also yeah. the time, um, if, you, if you check by data, uh, when um, um, it became harder for new editors to join and stick. Maybe it's related, maybe not, but it happened more or less at the same time that the undo button appeared. So there is a theory uh, that uh, that was one of the reasons it uh, uh, became harder to join uh, Wikipedia. So uh, this will essentially give the revert uh, permission to everybody. Uh, so that's uh, th there should be some very careful thought uh, dedicated to this. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I completely agree. Um, I'm always wary about making it easier to do these sorts of things, because on the one hand, you have, you know, as an experienced editor, you might think, yeah, you know, I want to be able to do this as quick as possible. Um, but making it too easy is also dangerous because we know that the process of having your edit reverted is not a good one. Um, when you get a templated message, when you get that notification that says your edit was reverted, you're much less likely to continue contributing. And so I completely agree. If we were to do something like this, we would want to both be doing a lot of user testing and also a lot of data um, monitoring to make sure that as we gradually tested it and rolled it out and A-B tested it, that we weren't seeing like a, a hugely negative effect there on, uh, on retention. Uh, Mike, how do you add a custom edit summary in that since the box is all filled with the automatic text? Uh, yeah, that is a question that we'll have to answer. Um, I mean, I think this would probably work potentially in the same way that it does at the moment where I, th I think maybe if you click into that box, it could, the text could be left aligned, right? So you can add your comment at the end, like on desktop. Um, that's something we'd have to explore. Um, like I said, these are very early initial explorations. And so that those kinds of questions I think we'll get into if we if we move forward with this. Uh, there's a link in chat to a good gadget for partial reverts. That's really helpful. Um, I will I will take a look at that. Um, I think like other product teams, we're often looking at gadgets and user scripts for inspiration. Um, you know, if if editors are already um, fixing a problem uh, themselves, then that, that's a good signal that we should consider that approach in the software um, by default. Um, and so I want to just then uh, open up a bit more broadly, um, given that we've got uh, maybe five or 10 minutes left. Um, is there anything else you want to share with us about content moderation on mobile? Um, are there any tasks that sort of stand out to you as maybe well suited to mobile um, or maybe things that are just too difficult to do on a phone that, that we almost shouldn't bother trying to, uh, trying to make fit into a, a mobile screen size? Um, yeah, anything else that you think our team should, should be aware of?
Mm. Fixing coordinates on nearby articles is a is a fun a fun micro task. Yeah. Oh, and Youngjin, yeah, how this looks in a tablet um, is a great question because um, I think I think we often forget about tablets. Um, we think about mobile screen size, we think about desktop, and we forget the tablet uses the mobile skin, but obviously blown up a bit. So um, those will definitely, as we start making you know better designs and um, more detailed designs, definitely tablet screen sizes will be a part of that. Um, and yeah, Nick, making the, the link to switch from mobile to desktop more visible, that's an interesting one because on the one hand, I agree uh, that that could be beneficial. On the other hand, I think ideally mobile would be good enough that you don't need to switch to desktop. Um, we're actually currently implementing some, some data logging so that we can monitor uh, where and when those clicks to desktop happen because I think that'll help us figure out which mobile pages aren't working. Um, or don't have the functionality they should do. Um, and so we will um, we'll be thinking a bit more about that button. And yeah, Michael, I've heard that that link sometimes does not work. Um, so that's something we'll uh, we'll also think about. Um, okay, so we have a few minutes left. Um, there's just one final thing I wanted to say then. Um, quick comment. Yes, Darcy uh, notes that even if mobile is good enough to never need to switch to desktop, users should always have preference. I agree. I'm not saying that we should get rid of that button at all. Um, certainly, you should always be able to switch if you need to. Um, so uh, if you want to stay up to date with the work we're doing and have more input in this, um, we have a page on MediaWiki. It's at Moderator Tools. Um, there you can find links to the project pages for the work I talked about that we've already done, but also that we're planning to do. Um, that work on diffs and revision navigation isn't quite up to date um, today, but I'm hoping to update it in the next couple of weeks to sort of have more of uh, those wireframes and, and the things we're thinking about there. Um, you can contact us directly. Probably the easiest way is to email me, um, but also you can find me around the wikis. Um, we also have a newsletter, which is brand new. We haven't sent any issues of that out yet, um, but you can find that on MediaWiki at moderator tools slash newsletter. Please go there and sign up either with your own user talk page or with the community venue that you think would be interested. And we're planning to send that out maybe once every few months, um, just with sort of updates on what we have done, what we're working on, and sort of where you can give us more input and give us more thoughts and feedback on, on what we're working on. So um, that's all I have. Um, I appreciate everyone's input. Um, I think this was a really interesting discussion. I'm going to go and copy the entire chat uh, into a document and make sure that I have that available to me to, to read through again later. Um, this was really helpful. Um, to our work. So thank you everyone for coming.